Tēnā koutou, ko Sue Gardner aho. I'm coming to you today as part of Pull Focus, a series by Art Collector magazine, interviewing artists. I'm based here in Tamaki Makoro in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, and I'm being joined today by Tāwhai, Tāwhai Ricard. Kia ora, Tāwhai. Kia ora, Sue. Uh... Ko hiku rangi te maunga, ko waia pū te awa, ko nuku tai me me te waka, uh, ko ue pōhatu te tīpuna, uh, ko te papatipu o ue pōhatu te whenua, uh, ko ngāti ue pōhatu uh, me ngāti parau oku iwi. Uh, ko tāwhai Ricardo hau, uh, uh, nō reira ngā mā tā waka, uh, tēnā koutou nau mai hara mai, uh, te kai kōrero uh, rangatira su, tēnā koe. Kia thank you very much Tawhai, thank you for introducing yourself to us and um, we're going to be looking at one of your works today and I'm just going to, you've provided us with a video which is fantastic for us to see, so I'm going to play that for our viewers now and we can talk about the work. So the, it's called Takuri's Hybrid Mobile from 2019, about 800 millimetres long, made up of reclaimed wood and plastic figures, acrylic paint, reclaimed metal. And it's in the collection of a um, of a, a supporter of your work, Tafai. So um, that's right. That's yes. great. Yeah. So we see here um, this combination of materials that you're putting together, um, the figures, the overall image structure of the work. So can you tell us a little bit about the reference you make in the title to the hybrid what are we combine what are your ideas here in wanting to combine all of these materials together what's your what's your your core idea you're wanting to talk about with the work right um yes well first of all um what we have here is Tikuri's hybrid mobile now Tikuri is the uh the batman figure in this particular work. And his sidekick, Pipi Faroro, uh, represents uh, Robin. Now they're not uh, direct cultural translations, but they are Maori superheroes in their own right. It's just the likeness that I've used uh, from the 1960s uh, Batman and Robin series. Now that's a long story talking about that, but uh, it, with, the, with the materials I use uh, is paying reference to our bicultural foundations in New Zealand. Now, I draw upon the uh, Baroque uh, architectural elements of the Victorian uh, period, which was a very dynamic and epic uh, period in our country's history. Now, again, referring to biculturalism, I, I couple that with the figurative painting of my Whare Nui ancestral house, uh, Hine Tāpora, which is on, in the Tairawhiti area of uh, the North Island. And I combine those two uh, to reflect our bicultural uh, foundations. Now, uh, the hybrid aspect of this particular work refers to um, our two cultures and the combining of our two cultures. Uh, we can uh, explore that more into areas such as uh, uh, cultural uh, fusion, uh, blood quantum, um, and just uh, all those aspects uh, of the, our two uh, founding nations of, of our country. So Taipa, you, you mentioned um, Hine Tāpora which, uh, on the Tairawhiti, that's on the east coast of New Zealand for those of you who are um, uh, not so familiar with New Zealand geography. Um, and um, it's, it's a reference to the paintings and uh, motifs and decoration within uh, a whāranui, a, a, a meeting house. And mm -hmm. There's particular styles you're interested in in that, which gives you this kind of flat style of painting. So you've used that then on 
and elements onto the the sculpture. So I thought if we could show now a, a few of those um, details, you can see the kind of example where you're you're introducing other superheroes, if you like, uh, as part of that. So um, there was a work such as this one here, and also references to New Zealand music heroes. Can you tell us a bit about the the other references that you've painted onto the surface of this hybrid mobile? Well, what I do is I, I reflect on our historical, cultural and social landscapes of our country. I draw upon my pop art background. I used to practice a style of um, Māori Kiwiana pop art, which I still use to inform my practice today. I use characters, popular um, um, characters in our, in, in our culture, and even just everyday characters. I use them to, to tell stories. Uh, in this particular image, we have Neil Finn of the band Split Ends. And across the other side, we have Tāpirandangata, uh, Surapirandangata. Uh, so they, together, they interweave and they tell stories, the stories that I want to put across, uh, reflecting our history and also our contemporary culture and society. I, as I said, yes, I draw upon uh, um, the pop art uh, movements of uh, New Zealand and uh, Western culture, but particularly uh, British culture because of our parallel uh, of our of our bicultural foundations. And so the, the materials in the work definitely reflect that. Um, and you, you're accessing a, a lot of times um, kind of found objects. Uh, and so can you tell us a bit about how you're sourcing your materials and um, the process that you go through to, to work on these, these sculptures? <laughs> Yes, I, I uh, go out to the uh, second-hand shops around, um, around Tauranga, Bay of Plenty. I also source things online. Uh, one thing about myself, I know what I'm looking for, what I would like to see in my work. And when I come across uh, an object of that nature, uh, light bulbs go off and I know exactly that that's the right, that's the right thing I, I want to use. Uh, to express the artwork that I'm doing at the time. We, I'm also interested the way yeah, you, you're using the kind of historical familiar objects like the, the carved wooden elements from a piece of furniture, also the kind of figurative painting, flat figurative painting style from your Faranui. Mm -hmm. um, but you're combining often in one image history and uh, contemporary, and I thought a uh, we could talk a little bit about this image here, the upside mm -hmm. down walker, well, the view that we're seeing it anyway, um, when you're moving three dimensionally around the object, we're um, encountering this. Can you tell us a bit about this one, Tarpine? Oh, yes. Well, um, as, as I've mentioned, the figurative style is, um, is part of uh, the Whare Nui, my ancestral house, uh, the figurative painting in that house. Uh, what I have here is a reference to the uh, COVID-19 outbreak with uh, social distancing and also wearing the um, protective uh, face uh, masks uh, that you see everyone wearing today, which is the social norm. Uh, it's upside down uh, because uh, that's the way the work unfolded. Uh, no real um, point of uh, gravity. Um, and also, I use uh, the humor, uh, the humorous aspect of it I use as well. Um, and that's due to the cultural expressions uh, within my own people of, um, of Te Tai Rafiti, Ngāti Ue Pōhatu, Ngāti Pro. So yeah, I, I use that sort of humor in my work uh, because the, the figurative painting style uh, doesn't sort of provoke uh, the emotional response in, in the viewer. So I rely on narrative and characters and I rely on humor to do that. And one of the characters here with this fantastic colored 
coat on Captain Pohara. Can you tell us a bit about the importance of this figure for you? Yes, Captain Pohara represents the, the, the element of poverty within the Maori culture. Uh, te iwi uh, rawakore. Uh, so I've got him wearing a uh, like a hat of a, a a naval captain of the of the uh, Victorian era, and he's dressed in a, a like a coat of many colours as well. Uh, that's kind of a contradiction, if you like. But he's he's a character that figures uh, that features in in, in my my works. Uh, all through my painting and, and my, my works, yes. What is the significance for you to be able to represent the issue of uh, poverty in your work? Um, well, yeah, it's important because it's a, it's a cultural aspect that's um, quite um, prevalent today. And I, what I do is I draw upon those sorts of um, those issues, issues that affect our, our country, issues that affect uh, uh, our peoples. And so, yeah, that's, that's one character that represents that. Uh, another character is Lady Wharekore, which is um, a homeless, she represents the homeless uh, people of New Zealand. And she's represented on, on um, the hybrid mobile as well? No, not on that particular one, but okay. uh, yeah, that is another character. <laughs> but a lot, all of the, um, all of the illustrations and the parts of the the components of um, a wide range of your um, practice come together within Takuri's hybrid mobile. It seems a good work to be able to bring together everything that's important to you. I know that the uh, it's also a way of you uh, talking about your philosophies, about wanting to give back to the community, you, you and your family uh, do that in a lot of other ways um, with, with other charitable activities that you're all involved in. Uh, so these are heartfelt images that um, mean a lot to you. Can, what can you tell us a bit about how you felt this particular artwork came together to really represent a lot of these different aspects of your work? Well, it's basically, you have a starting point, uh, which is steeped in history. It's steeped in the historical um, culture of our country and within the Maori people. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've, I've wrapped that all up in, in, in one artwork um, and I, I do many artworks that, that uh, express uh, what I'm talking about as well. I've wrapped it up in this, in this, uh, this one Tikuri uh, hybrid mobile. Um, basically, yes, it's our, it's our bicultural foundations and just reflecting on uh, all the historical cultural nuances mm. um, over the many generations and it's become this um, this vehicle, if you like. And now it's not the Batmobile. It's um, when you look at it through Western perspective, Western eyes, you see a Batmobile. But to see it through Indigenous eyes, it is what it is. It's Tikuri's hybrid mobile. So, well, it's hmm. a very successful work to bring together a combination of powerful images that not only have a broad cultural significance, but also have a very personal significance to you as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing some of that uh, with us today, Tafai. And um, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.